How's it going everyone? It is Andre Williams and over here we talk stocks and we focus on one thing. Always protect your profits. And you know what time it is. It is time for the joke of the day. If you're new to this channel, we do this five days out of the week. So here it comes. How do billboards talk to each other? With sign language. <laughs> Too bad. But anyways, what we're going to be talking about today is OCGN, which ended up having some great news on the Friday in the pre-market. Yes, it did have some selling pressure, but knowing that they're going to be going for an EUA for the younger age groups of 2 to 18, we have to talk about it more inside this video along with other stats that I want to share with you. So I won't waste any more time. Let's jump into the agenda. If you're new to this channel, I just want to let you know we have timestamps down below inside the description. But if you're a shareholder or you're thinking about taking a position, I highly suggest you watch this full entire video. So the first thing we're gonna go over is a technical analysis. We're gonna be taking a look at the overall price action. We wanna know support, we wanna know resistance, we wanna know those key levels in a bearish case scenario and as well as in a bullish case scenario. And then we're gonna go on Fintel taking a look at the recent institutional ownership and as well as the short interest interest information. The reason why the short interest is very important because it can have an impact on the way the stock performs. And then we're going to be taking a look at the order flow distribution. We want to know what was the buying and the selling behavior like on the Friday. And then when all of that is done, we'll be going into the final thoughts and as well as some more details. So let's get to it. So we're going to be doing a technical analysis for OCGN. Let's see how it performed on Friday. So ended up closing at $10.24 being up 1.79%. On the low, it tested $9.84, and then on the high, testing $10.55. When we take a look at the volume stats on the day, you can see we traded at 50.725 million shares, and for the average volume over 10 trading days, being at 105.912 million shares. So one thing that you could see right away, we did end up having below average volume on the day, but since since we were able to get some pretty good news inside of the pre-market, we had some strength inside of the stock. Now, when we take a look at our chart, which is the one-year daily chart, you can see from the RSI down below, it is right around 52.89, it's almost right there in the middle. And then when we take a look at the moving averages here on our chart, we have strength above the 100-day, the 200-day, the 50-day, but as you can see clearly right here, we just finished right above the 21-day EMA. It's at $10.18. and we close today at $10.24. So what this shows me right away, we still have continued strength in OCGN stock. So I'd want to see it actually hold up for the most part, this $10 level. That would be really good going into Monday and as well as for the rest of the week. If it does decide to pull back though, then the next area of support you can see we have is right here around $9.65. We also have support here right around the 920s. And of course, if we do pull back even further, I would love for us to hold up the nine dollar level as far as for the bullish case scenario you could see for the high of the day on the friday it was around 10.55 so if we are able to make a move up the next area of resistance will be right here around eleven dollars and fourteen cents if we are able to pass this level then i'll be looking forward to seeing a move going to 12 as you can see we have a big time gap here so that kind of gives you both scenarios in regards to the bullish move and as well as for a bearish move so let's see how ocgm performs going into Monday. So we're going to take a look at the recent institutional ownership and short interest information for OCGN. So as you can see here, green rows indicate new positions while red rows indicate closed positions. And taking a look at November the 5th filings, we have Moores and Kabat Inc. that purchased 25,000 shares. And we also have Limbrook Capital LLC with 64 shares. Come on, Limbrook, come on. And then when we take a look at closed positions, we have Advisory Services Network LLC fully out. We also have Larson Financial Group. We also have Capital Analyst and we also have Exponance on November the 4th. All right. And then we do see there was some big time loading up from institutions here in the beginning parts of November. So saying exactly for the 4th, the 2nd, the 1st, and also near the ending of October, Vanguard going in heavily. We also have Wells Fargo. Now let's take a look at the short interest. So the dark pool short volume ratio is at 55.60%. And then for the dark pool short 
short volume being just over 13.5 million shares. Scrolling down further on the page, the short shares availability is at 700,000 updated 11 minutes ago. And then for the short vol free rate, it is at 2.51%. And then when we take a look at the history of the short volume ratio, we could see for last week, Thursday, it was at 52.18. And then for the Friday that just passed, it is at 55.60. So this is very high and there's a lot of negative market sentiment around OCGN. But the great thing about it is if we have volume and there's buying pressure coming into the stock, then we can see some strong moves to the upside. But do keep in mind, this will have an impact on the way the stocks perform and there's going to be a lot of volatility. So now let's jump into the order flow distribution. Now let's take a look at the order flow distribution for OCGN. So we could see here on the inflow, it was 97.90. And then on the outflow, it was 83.34. So we ended up having an inflow day. When we take a look at the breakdown, we had zero on the large, on the medium, we had 67.71, and then on the small, we had 30.19. When we take a look at the outflow side on the large, it was 2.16, and then on the medium, it was 56.81, and then on the small, it was 24.37. When we take a look at the large scale orders in the last five days, you can see for November the 5th, so the Friday that just passed, it being negative with the outflow of 2,162. But the four days prior to that have all been inflow days. So now when we take a look at the breakdown, what was happening on the small, we could see there was a lot of buying on the retail side than we had compared to selling. And then when we take a look at the medium side, the same thing. We had more buying that was coming in. But when we take a look at what was going down on the large, we didn't have any inflows whatsoever, but we did have outflows. So this could possibly be institutions closing out their positions with it being at 2.1. 1.6 million. That's how we all broke them down. And now when we take a look at the turnover ratio, you can see it's at 25.52%. So that is still fairly high for a stock like OCGN, but it also does tell us there's still many who are continuing to hold on to their positions. And also there were many who bought up some shares on the Friday. We did end up getting that news inside of the pre-market. So I'm not surprised why there was demand for OCGN. So now let's jump into the final thoughts and we'll go over some more details as well. So for my final thoughts for OCGN, I felt it was great news that we got on the early morning of Friday. And the reason being is for them to file for that EUA for the younger age groups of two to 18, if they end up getting it, I can see this stock moving very well. Many people are saying like, why would they do that? Didn't they get denied the first time? I'm gonna be very clear. They did not get denied whatsoever when they filed for EUA for adults. Instead, what the FDA said, they said, you know what, instead, why don't you pursue going with the BLA because they wanted to get some trials done on US soil. So again, they were not denied the first time. So the fact that they're taking this opportunity to say, well, you know what, there is an issue. COVID is rampant in the younger age groups and we want to be a part of that mission. So will the FDA grant them approval? We're going to have to wait and see on that. Of course, when it comes to this play, it is extremely volatile. So I'm going to wait for it to settle a little bit. But again, we don't know when the decision is going to come. But one thing we do know for a fact we did end up getting our EUL so that gives a lot more credibility and legitimacy to Covaxin and we can see that there is a future for it. Now when we went on Fintel taking a look at the short interest information of course this play does continue to have short squeeze potential. The short interest has been going up and this is part of the reasons why if you have a lot of buying pressure coming into OCGN you can see some strong moves in price action. It wasn't too long ago this stock was trading at $17 and now it's cooled off being in that $10 range. And now I just want to be patient and see where this price decides to settle. But that just gives you a good idea of how this stock moves. And this is why it's important to make sure you're doing your homework and you're doing your due diligence so you're not buying at the top. You want to make sure whatever entry you decide to take that you're having a strategy, you have a game plan. So at least if it does pull back, you know exactly what you need to do to make sure that you are comfortable with your position. In regards to earnings, I do not have high expectations whatsoever. We already know that OCGN is burning through cash. So the only thing that we're going to be looking forward to are the business highlights and what are the updates going on as far as operations? Because we want to make sure they're putting themselves in the best position to make sure they can launch Covaxin successfully and as well for other drugs that they have in the pipeline. So I hope you guys found this video helpful and we'll be talking real soon.